Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How do you display your total sales for top two or three products and then branch out the rest into an others category? Now, before we begin, I'd like to give a big shout out to Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari for writing a blog post on that. I'll be using the same technique. And along the way in this particular video, I'll explain every small nitty gritty and how the formula actually builds up. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have already created a visual which displays you what the final output is going to look like. So take a look. We have top four products displayed, which actually contribute to 65.2% of the sales and the rest 35% has gone to the others category where all the other products are there. Now I have the ability to pick up how many products do I want to see. I want to take a look at only one product and branch out the others into the others category, top two products, top three products, top four products, whatever that might be. And the visual actually changes and all of the other products go into the others category. Now this particular visual can also be sliced by any particular other column of the tables like the calendar table or the products table or any other table that you have. So for instance, I'm now taking a look at the data for 2001. I could also have taken a look at the data for 2002, three, four or whatever year that might be. Now we'll see that how do we actually build this particular type of visual to be able to build this visual, we need a few things, right? And we'll go explore those things step by step. And eventually we'll pack all of those things together to be able to form this visual. Take a look. The first thing that we would need is that we would need the ability to put others as a category on the horizontal axis of the chart. We'll see that how can we do that? The other thing that we would need is that after we have put the others and all the other products on the horizontal axis of the chart, we then need a calculation that actually performs the calculation for only those products which are selected by the slicer and takes all the other products and clubs them into the others category. That is going to be a calculation that we will do, which is actually displaying the numbers. The third thing that we will need is the uh, arrangement of these bars. So there's a ranking criteria and by which these bars are arranged. So the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and then eventually this is the last one. We would need that ranking criteria. You can also see that others always is colored as gray and the first four bars are colored as orange. So we would need some sort of conditional formatting to be able to do that. There is also a dynamic title that changes and we would also need the selector that I can actually help us select how many products do we want to see in the visual. So let's just go tackle all of these steps that I have just described one by one and see how can we actually create this particular type of a visual. All right, let's just try to solve the first problem. The first problem is that I'd like to be able to create a horizontal axis in such a way that it shows me the names of the products, but it also shows me something like others alongside the name of the products. Now I would be able to do that only if I have a column of a table that displays all the names of the products, but alongside all the names of the products, it also has a mention of the word others. Let's just go take a look at our products table. If I just go take a look at the products table in the products column, and just open up the filter. I would have the names of all the products, but if I go search for something like others, I would not have in the product master. So what I have done is to be able to solve this problem, I have created a pseudo products table, which is right here. In the pseudo products table, all that I'm trying to do is, first of all, I'm trying to find the unique names of the products, and that's what the first part of the formula is doing. Distinct of the products, tab products table and the products name column. That's the first part. In the second part of the formula, all that I'm trying to do is alongside this table, I'm sort of adding one additional row with the value of others in that particular row. So now this is a one row table and that's the name, that's the unique products. And I'm just combining the two tables. And as the output, I not only get the names of the unique products, but I also in this particular column get something like others. If I just go take a look at that, I will have something like others in this particular table. Now this table is going to allow me to show others in the horizontal axis of the chart or the matrix or whatever visual that I'm trying to create. We'll work with matrix and tables first and then we will come back to the chart. It just helps you to understand better. So I'm just going to go back to my visual on page number one right here. In this matrix visual, what I have done is I have dragged the name of the product from the pseudo table that I created and placed it right here. And now you should see something like others alongside the names of all the products. So if I scroll down and let's just go take a look at M N O and we have others right here. Now, once we have been able to build this particular type of a table and display others, all that we need now is a calculation that takes a look at the first three products and displays the sales of the first three products and 
pushes all the other sales of all the products into the category of others. Now, the second step is to build that calculation and we'll actually take a look at how do we do that. All right, let's just start by creating a simple measure and building up the logic from there. I'm going to go up to my measures right here and say a new measure. I'm going to create a simple measure and let's just call this measure as top n. Now, the logic that I will provide in this particular calculation is a top n function. The top end function has the ability to extract the first two, three, four, five, whatever number of rows by a certain parameter, which is let's say a total sales or whatever that might be. So in the first part of top end function, I'm going to say that, hey, I'm trying to now extract three rows and we will automate the three later. But for now, let's just try to extract three rows. The next part of the top end function is going to be a table that from which table are you trying to extract the three rows? I'm just trying to extract the three rows from the pseudo products table that I have created. And the order by expression or in what order would you like to extract? Do you have a parameter? So I have a parameter, which is nothing but my total sales. And that's the order that I'd like to extract. I don't literally, literally want to extract the first three rows. I want to extract those three rows that are the winning three products. I close that bracket. I commit to the formula. If I right now commit to the formula, it is going to give me an error because the top end function delivers you a table as an output. Now you can't really fit a table into a visual right here. You can't really have three rows displayed right here. So I need to aggregate this table in such a way that it delivers me the sum of the three rows that are extracted. I'm going to wrap around this formula in the calculate function and I'm going to say calculate what? Calculate my total sales. The total sales that you're trying to find out is not going to be for the entire data. It's actually going to be for these three rows that get that get extracted in the order of total sales. All right. So the top end function becomes the second part of calculate and you only now going to get the sales for the three winning products. I'm going to now commit to this formula, press enter. And instead of dragging this particular measure onto my pivot table, I will drag this measure onto a card and let's see what is the output that we get. So I'll just drag it right here and let's just convert that to a card. The output that I get is about 4.8 million of the sales of the three winning products. How do I know this is right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a small test. And I am going to get my total sales right into my pivot table. And let's just see what is the sales of every single product. If I just maybe click on the total sales header right here, I get to see the three winning products that I have. So the three winning products are 1.3 million, 1.3 million, and 1.3 million, a little above 1.3 million. 1 3 times 3, 13 times 3 is 39. And we have a very close output, which is 4.08. Considering that this is a slightly over than 1.3, I'm sure this output is going to be legit and matching what we are trying to achieve. Now that we have the sales of the three winning products, let's just see that how this measure is going to behave if I drag this measure onto my pivot table. So if I just take this measure and drag it onto the pivot table, what do we get? We get the very sales of the product repeated once again. Let me help you understand why is this happening. So you said that, hey, go extract three products from the pseudo products table and then sum the sales. Now, once this filter is applied, onto the pseudo products table, you just have one product left. And one product will always be amongst the three products that you're trying to extract. And hence, you get to see the sales of the very product. Instead, what I want is that, hey, uh, please do not apply this filter and consider all the products that you have and then show me the sales of the top three products. So to do that, what I can actually do is I can wrap around the pseudo products table in the all selected function. And I'm just going to ask my uh, measure to consider all these products that you're able to see on the screen and consider all of these products and then show me the total sales for that. Let's just see what is the output. So if I commit to this formula and if I press enter, what I'm going to get is the same output, which is 4.08 displayed right here. But the problem is, although the output is right, but the output is also shown against all the other products which are not falling in the top three bracket. They are outside of the top three bracket. Now, how do I actually solve this product? Now, technically, if you think about it, the problem is I want to consider all of these products for calculating top three. But I also want to show the sales of top three against only the three products that are actually having the top three sales. Now, what I can actually do is once the filter of all selected has been applied, I can also pass in an additional filter of the products which are outside of the top three. So any of the product which is not rank one, rank two and rank three is outside of the top three. And I'm going to let this filter, which is mountain 200 silver, pass in and filter through the all selected table. And it will not have any products because they are not the top three products. How do I apply these, these filters? I'm actually going to use the keep filters function. 
I'm just going to go here and surround my uh, top end function in the keep filters function. And I'm going to say that, hey, keep this filter and then find the top three products. And if it is in the top three, just show me the sales of top three. If I commit to this formula, press enter, I am actually going to see the sales of the top three products only and rest everywhere I would not see any other sales because this was not the winning three product. It actually was left out in the all selected table because the all selected table was only considering three winning products. All right, let's proceed. Now from here on, now that I have the sales of the three products only, which are the winning products, I want to take all of these sales, which are I can see for all the other products and I want to group them into the others category. For now, let's just get rid of total sales because total sales is showing me the sales of all the products, whether winning or not. Let's just remove that from our pivot table and just get to see only the three products that I actually have. Now, apart from these sales, I would like to take a look at uh, all the sales and group them into an others category. Let's just see how do we do that. What I'm going to do is if you understand the logic of calculating the sales of others, what I essentially want to do is I want to take the total of all the products, which I initially could see if I just get the total sales back in, you will see the sales of all the products. So what I want to do is I want to take this number, which is 2.93 and I'd like to subtract 4, 4 million of that number. And that number is going to be nothing but the sales of all the other products. This is the sales of all the products which are there in the, in the pivot table. From that, if I subtract this particular number, I am going to get a single number that I can actually place it to the others. Let's just go see how can we actually do that. So I'm just going to get rid of the total sales number right here and start to revise my measure that I'm creating. So in this measure, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a variable. So I'm just going to say variable. And first of all, I'll create a table and I'm just going to call this as top products table. And this table is going to deliver me three rows, which are of the winning products, right? So we have already created that table and I'm just going to take this table and place it inside of this particular variable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another variable and I'm just going to say top product sales. And I am going to say that, hey, do the calculate function, uh, do the calculate function on uh, the winning three products, but also apply a keep filters on, on top of that. This is something that we did it using the formula earlier, but as of now, I'm just looping it inside of the variable, all right? It's actually going to give me the same result because I have now just broken down the same thing into two different variables as of now. So if I just maybe do the return here and if I just say, hey, just give me the top product sales, I'm actually going to get the same result. It just makes it easier to understand what's actually happening in the formula. All right, let's just go build this formula further. All right, what I need is I need to calculate the sales of other products. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, var and I'm going to say uh, other sales. And if you think about it, the other sales is going to be sales of all the products that one could see in the pivot table minus the sales of the top products, right? Without the key filters applied, because if the key filters are applied, you get to see the sales of individual products, but I don't really want to have individual products. I want to have all the products. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write a calculate function and I'm going to say that, hey, I'm trying to calculate total sales for all the visible products in my pivot table. So I'm just going to say all selected and of the pseudo products table. Uh, close that bracket, close that bracket. Now, what this is going to give me is that uh, 29 number, 29 million, I believe, of the sales of the entire products. That's what this is actually going to give me. And from this 29 million, if I actually subtract the calculate of total sales of this particular top product table, without the keep filters applied, I've actually solved the problem. So if I just maybe delete that, let's just try to return the other sales. So if I just click on other sales as of now and commit to the formula and let's just see what do we get as an output. Let's just see what do we get as an output. I think I made a mistake somewhere. This should actually be top product table. All right, I think that's correct. All right, now let's just go take a look at the result and we are now able to see the 29 minus 4 million is about uh, 25 million and that's what is the number that I'm able to see. So far so good. Now this 25 million is appearing against all the products here. Now I don't really want to have that. I want this to be clubbed it into the others category. Let's just see how do we do that. I'm actually going to click back on this particular measure 
and let's just start to revise this particular measure. Let's just see that what is the current product against, against which the calculation is done. I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call this variable as current product and I'm just going to use a selected value function and I'm just going to use the pseudo products table and just take a look at what's the current product against which you're working. And I'm just now going to write a very simple if function and I'm going to say if the current product is equal to is not equal to others in that case I would want you to display uh, this particular sales value which is the top product sales. Otherwise, I'd like you to display the other sales value. If I close that bracket, commit to the formula and press enter, let's just see what do we get. I will get to have the number of the first three products and the others combined right here. So now what we have done is we have been able to display, at least in the matrix visual, the top three products and all the other products are combined into the others category. Now, as of now, our formula is manual, meaning if I just go back to the formula and if I just go tweak the number and say that, hey, I'd like to take a look at four products. And if I commit to the formula and press enter, now I will get four products. And this part of the four is manual. I would want this to be automated in the control of the user. So the user can actually pick up two products, three products, four products. Let's just see how do we actually do that as next. All right, I've already done some legwork and I've already created a slicer on my screen, which is where I have one, two, three, four, five, and I can actually pick up any particular value. And as of now, nothing is gonna happen to my pivot table if I just say that I'd like to take a look at top two products. I don't see top two products. I don't see top three products or top four products because this slicer is as of now not connected. First of all, I wanna display that how do I build this slicer? Because I want to build a slicer, I need to create a table in that table, I will have a list of five values, which is one, two, three, four, and five, and then only I'll be able to build the slicer. If I actually go over to the data tab, here I have created a top n selection table, ridiculously simple. All that I have done is mentioned one, two, three, four, five, and I have just got the five values right here. Once I have got this value column, this value column is then dragged into the slicer, and I have just placed the slicer on the screen, and this is nothing but the value column of the table. Now, as of now, nothing is happening once the user actually picks up any particular value. The slicer value, what the user actually selects, needs to be connected to the formula that I made. That means that if I actually open up my measure, this three, which is the user, which is what the user has selected as of now in the slicer, needs to kind of come and affect this particular four selected and change this to a three. Let's just create a variable, and I'm just going to call this as top n selected, and I'm going to call this as selected value, and from the value column of this particular table. And instead of writing four manually, I'm just going to replace that with the top n selected. Uh, the variable that I have just declared here. What this measure is actually doing is that it's actually taking a look at what the user has selected in the slicer, capturing that value and placing this right here in this particular table. So far so good. If I commit to the formula, press enter, let's just go take a look at the output of that on the visual. So uh, I can now take a look at three products. I can now take a look at two products or one product or even five products. This is working absolutely fine. All right, as of now, we've been working with this matrix visual. We have not really converted that into a chart to see how it looks like, like the chart that I showed you at the start of the video. What I can actually do is I can actually click on this particular uh, matrix visual. You don't have to worry about the totals here because the totals are not going to show up in the chart. So you can read, we can actually leave it aside. If I actually click on the matrix visual, I can actually click on uh, the clustered column chart and actually forms like a chart. This is cool. Now, if I actually click on one value or two value or three values, it actually shows me the correct number of values and all of the other values go into the others category. This is cool. The problem with this chart is that as of now, it is not sorted as the first part. That means I'd like to take a look at the first winning product, the second winning product, the third winning product, and then I'd like to take a look at all the others. That's one. The title is more dynamic that we saw it at the start of this particular video, which is my title. And I certainly would like to have that particular title and see what is the contribution of top three or four products over the overall sales. That's number two. And the, th the third part is definitely the coloring. So I want others to be in gray and all of these products in to be in some other fancy color. So how do we do all of these things? Let's just take a look at the chart that I've already created and you should understand. So take a look at the display chart that I have it here. 
And let's just go over all of these three elements one by one. Let's just take a look at first the ranking, that how do I actually rank these into the correct order? I've created a measure called a rank measure. And if you take a look at this rank measure, this rank measure is doing nothing but ranking these products in the order. So this is the first product, this is the second product, the third product, the fourth product, and others. Now, if you take a look at the visual here, others should definitely get the first rank because the value of others is the highest. Now, that will not happen because if you take a look at my rank measure, in the rank measure, all that I'm doing is finding out the total sales for something like others category, but we don't have others physically present in the products table. So others is always going to be left out and we have artificially created others. Even when I was doing the calculation and I was placing all the values in the others category, I created that logic of if to be able to place all the other calculations in the other segment. So when I'm trying to calculate sales for all the products, others will always show up as blank. And because it shows up as blank, uh, it is always going to get the last rank. So all that I'm trying to do is that I am trying to build a ranking criteria and I'm trying to say, hey, uh, find the top three or four or five, whatever the user has selected through the selected value option right here in the all the products that are visible to you on the screen, which are these three or four products and find total sales for that. Now, this is actually going to give you a table and the rank X first part is nothing but the table. So in this particular table, I'd like to rank it by the criteria of total sales, descending and dense. If I close the bracket and if I commit to the formula, this formula, I just have to drag it into the tooltips of the particular visual as the rank visual. And once I drag into the tooltips of this particular visual, what I can do is come on the ellipsis and sort this by the ascending order of the rank here. And that actually allows the sorting as per the tooltip. Now, if I actually click on the particular visual, I can see the rank number five, rank number four, rank number three, rank number two, and rank number one. Absolutely good. The other thing that I want to do is build a dynamic title, uh, which is this particular title. Now, if you take a look at this particular title, there are two dynamic parts of the title. One is the number four, which is displayed as per what you have selected in the slicer. And the second dynamic part of the title is the percentage contribution of the four products. Now think about it. How would you calculate percentage contribution? It's going to be the sum of all of these four products divided by the sum of all the products displayed in the entire data set, right? So what I'm going to do is if I just take a look at the measure that I have created for the title, which is nothing but the title measure. And what I've done is, first of all, I have calculated, hey, what is my total sales of the top three or four products? right? That's the top end pattern that you have been seeing until now. And then I say that, hey, why don't you divide this top end by total sales without any filters? Now, remember that this is not going to have any particular filters because this is going to be a title. I'm not dragging this into a pivot table against a filter context. This is just going to be the title. So if I just divide my top products by the total sales of without any filters, I am actually going to get a percentage. And then I just kind of do this fancy concatenation of top, um, number four products made and whatever is the percentage sales value. And I kind of display that nicely in my title and that actually forms the title. Last part is the color. How do I display the product name into a, an orange color and the others into a gray color? So if I actually click on this uh, particular chart here, I have used something like a conditional formatting on top of the bars and the formula for conditional formatting is something like this. Take a look at the color formatting here. I am saying is that, hey, why don't you take a look at what product are you working on? Are you working on this product? Are you working on this product? What product are you working on? If the name of the product is others, then I have a hex code for gray. If the name of the product is not others, then this particular hex code, which is the color for orange. And that's all about it. I kind of place that in the conditional formatting of the bar and it absolutely works just fine. And now I can just slice and dice this by any other calculation, any other year or any other measure. And this works absolutely fine. All right, that was all about classifying your total sales for the top products and categorizing all the others as others category. Now I do understand the part where we discuss the keep filters and the all selected could have been a slightly tricky part of the formula, but I'm gonna leave links to watch these uh, individual functions on its own and hopefully it will start to make uh, more sense. The keep filters function, the all selected function and things like that. Now a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query course in case you're starting out with Power BI 
and you'd like to learn DAX and Power Query in a more structured way and learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.